Coming up, Jonathan and Todd meet up with Gus and Woody from Dive Talk for an epic rebreather cave dive. Welcome to Jonathan Bird's Blue World. In my first seven years as a certified cave diver, I had been exclusively diving conventional open circuit scuba gear. And while open circuit is relatively simple and reliable, it has limitations. It's very difficult to carry enough gas to make extremely long dives, and that limits how far into a cave system you can explore. Recently, Todd and I trained with Ed Sorensen on the KISS Sidewinder. This cave-oriented side-mount rebreather recycles a diver's exhaled breath, allowing a small amount of gas to go a long way. With a Sidewinder, we can stay submerged for up to six hours, so naturally we want to try a longer dive to see what it's like. So we've popped down to Florida for the weekend to try a famous cave dive known as the Grand Traverse. Our first stop, Amigos Dive Center, where we run into some familiar faces. Oh my God! It's the Dive Talk Guys! Hello everyone, my name is Gus. Hi, I'm Woody. And today Gus and Woody run Dive Talk, a super entertaining YouTube channel that focuses on everything related to diving. I'm glad you dressed for the occasion. That's why. It's no coincidence that we've run into Gus and Woody here in Florida cave country. They're big into cave diving. Before we can dive, we need to rent some tanks and fill our O2 bottles. And we meet Bruce, the new owner of Amigos. I can't believe we saw you guys here, though. It's so strange that you're here. And, uh, hey, I have an idea. Let's do a collaboration. Okay, you yeah. guys want to go diving? Yeah. We drive over to West Skiles Peacock Springs State Park and form our dive plan. Caves this way. The Grand Traverse is 4,800 feet swimming underground from Peacock Spring to Orange Grove Spring. But along the way, we will pass Olson Sink and Challenge Sink. The longest section is 1,800 feet from Challenge Sink to Orange Grove. That means the furthest we will ever be from an exit is 900 feet. But if we arrive at Orange Grove and the cave had collapsed and blocked our exit, and someone had a rebreather failure at the same exact time, we're all carrying more than enough open circuit bailout to swim 1,800 feet all the way back to Challenge Sink. We can't just suit up and do the dive because first we have to prepare the exit, which means a dive before the dive. This is something we do on all traverses as a matter of safety. So our first dive is being done at Orange Grove Sink, where the traverse will eventually end. Gus and Woody are going to lay the guideline and I'm going to film it. Gus is helping me set up because it's important that we are streamlined and everything is connected properly. Later on, I will help him don his unit as well. This is standard protocol for our cave dives. Oh, it started. 
cold water started to seep into my suit. <laughs> Before we can dive, a pre-breathe to perform a series of tests ensures that everything is working properly. Woody places an O2 bottle in the spring so we have extra decompression gas in case someone has to switch to open circuit on the dive. Gus ties a reel on a log in the open spring and we follow him into the cave. I completed this traverse twice back in 2020. And since no one else in the team had done it before, I was selected to lead it. As the lead diver, in addition to guiding the team, I'm also responsible for all the line work. Woody, who's the second diver in the team, works with me to provide assistance and to confirm the guideline is set properly. It's all about teamwork. hundred feet back in the cave, we tie our reel to the main line. Now, when we reach the end of the traverse, we know we've come to the right exit and we have a continuous guideline back to open water. The dive only takes 10 minutes. Then we load all the gear back in the cars and drive over to Peacock Spring. All right, guys, so today we're gonna complete the Grand Traverse at Peacock Springs. So what we're gonna do is, the Grand Traverse is basically uh, you know, going into an entrance like Peacock 1 and swimming all the way to exit at the main entrance, which is Orange Grove. We're gonna come in at Peacock 1, we're gonna take the goal line, which is gonna take us all the way to Olsen Sink. We're gonna stop right there, then we're gonna go back down, and we're gonna swim all the way to Challenge Sink. Then challenge sink, we're gonna take like a five minute break and then we're gonna keep going all the way to Orange Grove. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Awesome. This is gonna awesome. be so fun. <laughs> boom, yeah, baby. Boom, <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Let's do it. Peacock is one of the most popular cave dives in the world. And it's almost a mile swim to Orange Grove, where we just placed our reel. This is going to be fun. You know, there's only one thing I'm concerned about. It's really hard to tell which one of you is Woody underwater. Yeah. It's, it's very difficult. I have orange fence. <laughs> oh. Dropping into Peacock, the water is a little murky from all the divers. As we begin our dive, we pass a few open circuit divers on their way back. 
It won't be long before we're out of the range of most open circuit divers, so we shouldn't be seeing too many people in the cave. It is possible to complete the Grand Traverse on open circuit scuba, but it typically requires at least four scuba tanks, and those four tanks have to be carried the whole way, so the going is slow. Not too far in, there's a small pile of animal bones and a turtle shell. Monster Mouth, a famous formation in the cave that's fun to swim through. Soon we start to see organic material on the floor of the cave, which is always a sign you're getting close to an opening to the forest above. start heading up into Olsen Sink. We surface through a layer of tiny floating plants called duckweed. It looks really cool, but it gets in everything. Great. It's green. It is green. <laughs> well, I just under the tank. I'm gonna need some okay. water. I can still breathe a little bit. I'm gonna be breathing some duckweed. Yeah. We head back down on the second leg of the journey towards Challenge Sink. into a section of cave that has a lot fewer divers, so the water is noticeably clearer. This secluded section of cave has a lot of blind cave crayfish, one of the few cave-adapted animals that live here. Soon we reach the only navigational decision. We have to stay right at the T to get to Challenge. Now I know the ground here looks like solid rock, 
but it's actually very silty. That's why we stay a few feet away from it and only use the frog kick to move through the water. The reason for a frog kick is to protect the visibility. You don't want to kick up silt and sediment. A frog kick keeps your feet up and away from the bottom, and it directs the water backwards, not down towards the silt and sediment. After about 30 minutes of swimming, once again we start seeing a bunch of organic material. We surface into a tiny karst window known as Challenge Sink. It's a challenge to reach and a challenge to surface, so it has an appropriate name. In an emergency, you could surface and climb out of the cave of Challenger Sink. It wouldn't be easy, but probably a lot better than the alternative. How you doing there, Father Bod? I'm all right. This is cool. I'd like to have this in my backyard. This yeah, would be cool in your backyard. Oh, we could build like a whole ramp down here. Yeah. And uh, this would be a nice dive in there. Okay. You guys ready to move on? Last leg? Last leg. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. Now we begin the longest leg of the traverse. But as Gus told us, it has some of the most interesting formations. As Jonathan pointed out, this section of the cave doesn't really see a lot of traffic. And since there were no other divers near us and we were all on rebreathers, the dive is ultra quiet and peaceful. This is the first time Jonathan and I are diving our sidewinders with aluminum tanks. So we definitely don't have our trim dialed in yet. When we fly to a location and rent tanks locally, we often end up with a gear configuration that we've never had before. So it takes us a few dives to figure it out. This section of the cave reverses back above itself abruptly, which is unexpected and wild. Soon we reach the halfway point. It's the same distance back to Challenge or onward to Orange Grove. Right now, we're the furthest we've been from daylight. We enter a tighter, twisty section that also goes up and down, challenging our rebreather buoyancy skills. So it's great practice and loads of fun. Gus and Woody make it look easy.
All too soon, we arrive at our reel in Orange Grove. Gus unties it and reels it up as we head back out into the light of day. You can see Woody here assisting me by releasing the guy line from secondary tie-offs so I can focus on reeling it. Emerge into Orange Grove Sink, where we need to complete a safety stop before surfacing. the Grand Traverse, brother. With Jonathan Bird. Yeah. Man. And Todd. And led by Gus. Good job. <laughs> the Grand Traverse is not only a grand adventure for cave divers, but it serves as excellent practice for longer rebreather dives and gives us a feel for the kind of exploration we could do in other caves. The Sidewinder Rebreather is an amazing new tool for our continued adventures into the blue world. Hey everybody, if you enjoyed this video, check out the Dive Talk reaction to it. And if you want to learn more about a traverse, check out this video.